Welcome everyone. My name is Erica Knowles and I am here with my colleagues, um, Vanessa Lumen and also Annie Riley. Um, we are excited to be here facilitating for um, tonight's webinar on attracting the best talent. Um, first, I would like to go through just a few housekeeping items with you all. Um, we will be addressing all questions at the end of tonight's webinar, so please hold on to your questions throughout the webinar, um, and we will get to them at the end. This session will be recorded in both English and Spanish. Um, to ensure the um, accessibility for all participants. You will be given the option in just a moment to select the language of the room that you would like to, um, to go to. So we will have two different breakout rooms, one for English and one for Spanish. Um, once we complete our webinar portion, then we will come back to this room and we will do the Q&A um, section, session of the, um, of the webinar. Okay, let's start with a short disclaimer. The information contained here has been prepared by Civitas Strategies and is intended to, it is not intended to constitute legal, tax, or financial advice. The Civitas Strategies team has used reasonable efforts in collecting, preparing, and providing this information, but does not guarantee its accuracy, completeness, adequacy, or currency. The publication and distribution of this information is not intended to create and receipt does not constitute an attorney client or any other advisory relationship. Reproduction of this information is expressly prohibited. Only non-commercial uses of this work are permitted. Okay. Let's get started. Welcome again. Um, I'm excited to be here for this discussion on a critical topic for childcare um, as a whole in the industry, finding and attracting um, and keeping that top talent. So we will be focusing on a couple key questions. How can you connect with top talent? Um, and where can you post a job? And then also, how can you retain that staff once you actually get them. So these questions might seem straightforward, but in today's rapidly evolving job market, especially in our field, the answers are a little more nuanced than you might think. So we are not just talking about putting up a help wanted sign or posting something um, on a job board and hoping for the best. When we discuss connecting with top talent, we will be exploring some strategies that go beyond traditional recruitment methods. We will look at how to identify the qualities that make someone a great fit for your child care business. Um, we're also, we will discuss how to position your child care business as an employer of choice, someone that people want to come and work for. Um, as for where to post the job, we're going to be thinking outside the box. Yeah, we're going to touch on some of the traditional platforms that you're more used to, but we'll also explore some unconventional um, ways as well. Throughout our conversation, I want you to keep in mind and think about things that, you know, maybe have and have not worked for you and think about where you're struggling right now as far as um, finding that top talent. Um, we want you to be able to find the right people who share the passion that you have for our early childhood education. Um, someone who's going to contribute to the warm and nurturing environment that we're sure that you've worked so hard to create. So I want to encourage you again to think about your own experiences as you go through this. What has worked well for you in the past? What challenges have you faced? Um, what are your insights um, into this topic? So just keep those things in mind. Remember, in our field, the quality of the staff directly impacts the quality of care that you can provide. So by the end of our session, you will have a toolkit of strategies to help you connect with the kind of top talent that will help your child care business thrive. Now that we've kind of set the stage a little bit for our discussion, let's dive into um, a crucial question. So what exactly do we mean by top talent in the child care field? So understanding this is the first step in knowing how to connect with the top talent in those standout candidates. 
in childcare, top talent goes far beyond just having the right qualifications on paper. Of course, education and experience are important, but there are other qualities that truly set exceptional candidates apart. First and foremost, you should be looking for those individuals with a genuine passion for early childhood education. Um, it's not just a job for them, it's a calling. Um, these are the people who light up when they talk about the children in their classroom, um, child development as a whole, um, who get excited about learning new teaching methods and who truly believe in the importance of early education. Adaptability and creativity are also crucial. As you know, no two days are the same in the childcare world. So we need people um, who can think on their feet, who can turn unexpected situations into learning opportunities for the children, who can come up with engaging activities on the fly. Strong communication skills are also a must. Um, top talent in our field not only can communicate with children, but also with their families and their fellow staff members as well, and you as well. So um, all very important for them to contribute to the positivity of the team. And then also a commitment to ongoing learning is another key trait that you want to look for. So the field of early childhood education is always evolving and top talent stays on top of the latest research and best practices. So keep a lookout for those people. Um, they're eager to attend, you know, workshops or professional development trainings. They want to pursue additional certifications and then they also want to apply that knowledge in their work every day. Emotional intelligence is probably perhaps one of the most important qualities. Um, working with young children is stressful. It requires patience, empathy, and um, the building to the ability to manage one's own emotions while they're also helping the children to learn to manage theirs, right? So lastly, we're looking for team members. Um, Childcare is a collaborative effort. There's no one person that can run an entire child care business. It takes a team of people. So they need to be supportive of their colleagues and also be able to contribute to the positive work environment that is needed. As we discuss strategies for connecting with top talent, keep those qualities in mind. We're not just looking to fill positions. We are looking to build teams that are passionate, that are skilled um, educators who really can help your child care business thrive. So I'm sure many of you have felt how tough it is to connect with the right talent. We know that sometimes it really can feel like finding a needle in a haystack. But here's the thing. We've got to shift our thinking and realize that just as you market your child care business to potential families, you must think like a marketer when you're looking for new employees as well. So your job announcements need to be written um, and they need to be posted in places that are going to reach the cream of the crop. It's not about getting hundreds of applicants for your job that you post. It's about finding the right person for that job. So now I know what you're thinking, easier said than done, um, but don't worry, we've got some tricks um, up our sleeve that will help you to craft some wonderful job announcements that will have top talent hopefully lining up to get to work for you. So one of these is to understand the two different types of talent searches. Let's dive into those next. So there are two different approaches to how you can go about connecting with top talent, the passive and the active. People are most familiar with the passive search, right? So this is what most people do. You post the job description on a job board, whether it be local or national, um, and you kind of just cross your fingers and hope for the best, right? So in this scenario, we're relying on the idea that not only 
are these candidates out searching for a new job, but that they're going to come across your posting and choose that job over everything else and everybody else that's posted on that job board. But there's more to it than just posting um, a job and crossing your fingers and hoping for the best. So there are some things that you can do to optimize your job postings for search en engines um, that you are posting on. And this is really critical in today's digital age. You want to research and use some industry specific keywords that potential candidates may be searching for. So don't forget to incorporate your location um, as well um, into where you are looking for top talent. So regularly update your postings to maintain visibility in job searches. So anybody who has used Indeed and like the free part of Indeed and not paying for the um, job postings, you realize that, you know, your job is here and then a couple of days later it starts moving down, down, down the line. So if you are constantly maintaining and updating that job posting, it then pushes it back up to the top so more people will see it. So you also want to consider leveraging um, some multiple different platforms. So, uh, you know, obviously Indeed and other job boards, that, they're great ideas. They're wonderful sometimes. But you also need to think about some other potential platforms as well. So maybe um, professional social networks um, like LinkedIn um, or, you know, other different local community boards or newsletters as well. So also think about showcasing your culture. Your job announcement is often a candidate's first impression of your child care business. So use it to highlight what makes your child care business unique. Share testimonials from current staff about how much they absolutely love working there. Um, if possible, you could, you know, depending on where you're posting, you could include a video or a photo of your facility or your team in action or your team out doing you know, community service together or some sort of fun activity together. This really gives potential applicants a real feel for what it's like to work for you in your childcare business. Also remember timing. So timing really does matter. Um, did you know that research shows job postings get more traction earlier in the week than they do later in the week? So keep that in mind um, as you are updating your, your job announcements. Also, if you're targeting recent college graduates, you know, you want to be mindful of their academic calendar. They're not probably going to be looking for a new job during finals weeks um, or, you know, things when they're getting or times when they're getting ready to go back home for the summer. So keep those fluctuations um, in mind as well. And then also remember we are we live in a mobile friendly world so make sure that your job posting wherever you are posting it is mobile friendly um you know have a button on there where they can apply right away um, so that mobile optimization is key for the potential candidate now let's kind of shift gears and talk about active talent searches um, and the different strategies for that. So this is where you really have an opportunity to set your recruitment efforts apart from the others. It's probably safe to assume that the best candidates that you are looking for and that you need for your, your child care are probably working somewhere else. And they're probably not looking for a new um, position if their current um, you know, management is doing a good job at retention. So you have to think outside of the box a little bit. And that is where the active talent search comes to play. So this does take a little bit more pre-planning, a little bit more time up front. Um, but in the planning and the execution, um, you know, putting the time into both of those up front, it really is going to be um, a huge uh, difference for you in your in your job searching. Um, using this approach, your focus on reaching out to potential connectors, which we're going to talk about here in a second, but to access networks in your candidate pools beyond 
what you alone have access to. So using connectors are that's going to expand your reach and it's also overall more effective. Now, when we talk about active talent searches, some of the um, things you might immediately think of is a recruiting firm or a recruiter. And yes, certainly that's an option, usually a very expensive option. Um, so we're definitely not saying you need to hire a recruiting firm um, to find staff for your child care business. Um, if you can, and if you, uh, you know, do have the funds and the availability availability for that. Um, recruiting firms are great in helping you, uh, but definitely, you know, thinking and changing your, your mindset into this active role will um, make a huge difference and you do not have to have a recruiting firm to conduct an effective um, active talent search. So how do you go about this? Well, one of the most important tools in your active search are your connectors. So let's talk about connectors and candidates next. So let's take a moment really just to clarify the two key terms um, for our talent search strategy. So candidates and connectors. So understanding the difference between these two groups is very important for your recruitment efforts. So let's start with candidates. So these are the people who will potentially be filling your open positions. They're the staff that you're looking to bring into your childcare business. When we think about candidates, we're focused on their skills, their experience, how well they might fit into your team. Um, these are the people who will directly be caring for the children in your pro program and also interacting with your families every single day. So connectors are a different story altogether. These are the people who can help you find those great candidates. So think of connectors as recruitment allies. So they're not applying for jobs themselves, but they have networks, they know people, they have relationships that can lead you to a pool of potential candidates that you otherwise might not have access to. So connectors could be current employees, um, colleagues in the industry, um, professors at early in early childhood um, programs near you, or even parents who are satisfied with your or happy with your um, child care business. So again, connectors are very important. They are not the people who are going to be applying for the job that you're posting. Instead, you're asking them to share your job posting with others. So recommend potential candidates maybe, um, or even just give you insights into where you might find the talent that you're looking for. It's a different kind of conversation for sure. Um, one that's a little bit more about a partnership um, and really it does have mutual benefit, especially if it's a current family or a current um, employee. So let me give you an example. Say you have a parent in your program who works for a local community college. They're not the candidate for the job that you are looking to fill. However, they could be an invaluable connector for you. They might know students or recent graduates in early childhood education who would be perfect for your childcare business. So by engaging this parent as the connector, you just opened up a whole new talent pool um, for, for looking for someone for your position. So the beauty of focusing on connectors is that it multiplies your reach. Instead of just you know, crossing your fingers and hoping that the right candidate is going to see your job announcement, you're actively tapping into multiple networks. It's like having a team of recruiters that work for you each of them with their own unique perspectives and connections. So as you think about the recruitment strategy, I want you to consider both candidates because they're important as well as connectors because they are also just as important. So how can you reach out to potential candidates directly? And equally important, who are the connectors um, in your network that you could possibly you know, help to amplify your job search? By leveraging both of those types of people, you are setting yourself up for a much more effective and efficient talent search. 
Remember, in the world of child care, your team is everything. By understanding and utilizing both candidates and connectors, you're taking a big step toward building the best possible um, team for your child care business. And that means the children that you that are there are going to get better care. So very, very important to remember your candidates and your connectors. So let's dive into the next crucial aspect of finding the best talent for your child care business and connecting with top talent. Um, the key here is to put yourself in their shoes. So it's all about understanding your ideal candidate and figuring out the best way to reach them. Um, and by doing that, um, you are going to be utilizing a three-part job announcement that we will also be talking about. But let's talk about um, the people that you're looking for. So close your eyes for a minute. Think about the ideal employee. What does their typical day look like? Um, are they fresh out of college or are you looking for someone who has a lot of years of experience? Um, are they potentially a very seasoned professional employee um, with many years under their belt? Or maybe they're a parent themselves or even a grandparent um, that you're looking for. So thinking about the type of person and exactly who you are looking for is really going to help you. What motivates them? What kind of work environment do they thrive in? The more clearly that you can envision the person, the better equipped you are to find that person. So now here's where it again gets a little interesting. You have to go back to thinking like a marketer. You need to reach your target audience. You need to figure out how to best reach the ide your, your ideal candidates. Where do they hang out, um, both online and offline? Are they active on LinkedIn? Um, are they potentially sharing different articles about early childhood education? Or are they more likely to be found in maybe local or community groups online, parent groups online? Um, if you're looking for recent college graduates, again, think about connecting with um, someone at a lo the local community college. Um, find a specific person who works in the early childhood education um, department and reach out to that person personally. Make that connection. So the key here is to go where your ideal candidates are rather than waiting for them to come to you. You don't have to figure this all out on your own. You can ask your current staff for input. Um, talk to your, your staff members who are your, your star employees. What attracted them to your child care business? What makes them want to stay at your child care business? Reach out to parents and ask them, um, you know, if, if they know anyone or if they know where you could potentially find some, um, some potential employees in your area. The bottom line, connecting with top talent isn't about casting out a huge net and trying to get as many people as possible. It is, again, thinking like a marketer and finding the ideal candidates. Thinking, again, about being creative with your approach, um, you will be then well on your way to building your dream team for your child care business. So let's talk about job announcements and job descriptions. Um, I'm not sure, but if you've noticed that I have said job announcement quite a few times, this was something new to me um, before working here at Civitas Strategies. But when an organization gets ready to hire, often... Um, you know, they they post that job description and again, just kind of cross their fingers and do that passive search. So the distinction between a job description and a job announcement is very, very important. Um, it is a crucial shift in kind of the thinking that um, that you need. Um, a job description is a very important tool when you are hiring someone. It's an HR tool. Um, it is 
very important for that employee to have their job description so they know what all is required of them. Um, it's going to help you to clarify the roles and responsibilities of the people that you hire. Um, obviously, they serve a purpose, but their main purpose is not recruiting talent. Um, their main purpose is laying it all out there about what is required of them. So we want you to shift your thinking in creating a job announcement for recruiting. Again, it's about thinking like a marketer. This is a document that clearly is going to describe what skills and capabilities are needed. Um, but on top of that, it's going to give your prospective candidates a clear, enthusiastic, interesting, um, exciting opportunity to see inside of your child care business. So this is a, this is different um, than your traditional job description, which usually has some dry background, you know, things just listed out in bullet points, standard explanations. Um, again, they're very important, but they are not to be used. Um, they were not created to be used as um, marketing for potential employees. So the job announcement is going to act like a marketing piece for you. Its purpose is to inspire the right candidate about the opportunity to work with you. So to help you transition to a job announcement, we've broken it down into three parts. So each part is going to serve a purpose in what it's communicating to the ideal candidate with the overall of uh, overall goal of essentially selling the position to them. So we want to make the job and the organization as appealing as possible. We want them to want to come and work for you. So you'll see that the process of doing a three-part job announcement also requires that for you as the employer that you're kind of going to whittle down the details about what is really important and what you really are looking for. So this requires a good amount of clarity about the most essential expectations of the job and also what type of person you're looking for to fill that position. So clear, short, and simple is the name of the game. It's a good time to kind of look and reflect and decide what you would like to see from and from this person, and then also to know what is required and what you're just would like to see, right? So like what is required is very important, but some things can be taught um, if the person is willing. So let's talk through the first one, the why. So this is where you refer to your value statement if you have one for hopefully for your business. A good way to think about this section is again, putting getting that person on the hook. Uh, remember that this, you know, the best talent is probably not looking to leave their current uh, position right now if their um, current team, you know, a management team is doing a good job. So you really have to sell your program. So when drafting these first few sentences at the top of your job announcement, you want to think about the reasons your business is attractive, more special, more innovative, more unique than the others that are around you. What is special about those people that you serve, the families that you serve, or the community that you're in, um, the growth that you're experiencing? experiencing or exciting new things that are coming up or any other exciting opportunities that are motivating or ex in, or inspiring for a potential employee. All of those things, very important to get those right at the top of that job announcement. Next is the what. So recruiting the traditional way means that you have a long list of requirements in that job description um, and you're going to get, you know, a bunch of candidates and you're going to kind of narrow those candidates down through reviewing all of the applicants and screening the potential employees and then interviewing them. Um, and again, that takes a lot of time and effort. So this part of the process is really going to front load the work um, in the effort. Um, you're going to want to be very specific up front about what you're looking for. What's most essential saves you some work later and also allows the top applicants to really see themselves in what you've drafted. So ask yourself, 
what are the most one or two key things, key important things that this person will need to be successful in your childcare business? Be honest. Um, what can they potentially learn or maybe even train to do? Yes, it would be nice if you could hire someone who, you know, had the education and 10 years of experience and all of the things, but what can be taught um, you know, what can they learn on the job? It is a, um, you know, there's a certain audience or client that you really need, um, that you want to understand, you know, the more general skills that you're looking for that, again, can be taught or learned. Um, has the market for talent changed since you've last hired someone? If so, um, have you even looked to see if, you know, the places down the street have changed how they are hiring? Um, you want to make sure that you are kind of in the know of you know what's going on in the in the child care businesses around you at the end you want to look back at your list and you want to ask yourself the to figure out and pull out the top three to five um absolutely non-negotiables and then add priorities around education experience um, availability, they have to be able to work when you need them to work um, and, and training. And those may be things that, you know, that licensing is telling you that they have to have. Um, however, it's very important that they have those things if they are requirements. Read through your job announcement and make sure nothing is vague. You want to be as clear as possible um, and as, as open and um, you know, honest as possible with these potential candidates. The next thing is the how. So this section is mostly logistical, but information here sets expectations on both sides and also is going to help you to avoid any surprises later. The, um, the how is going to outline all of the information that you would like to see as part of their application, um, you know, if they have an application packet, um, and how they will put it together and submit it to you. So if you are thoughtful and proactive here about what information you would like to see, it will help you down the line when you are making decisions about applicants. We also recommend here that you be as clear as possible about the position too. So like what schedule are you looking for? Put it right in the job announcement. If you need someone who works nine to six, you want to make sure the person knows that before they waste their time and your time um, and they're, you know, feeling like the perfect candidate and you want them to work nine to six and they can't work any different hours than seven to, you know, six to two or whatever. Um, again, be as clear and upfront as possible. What is the compensation? Put it in the job announcement. If you are looking for someone and, you know, you're paying $10 an hour and they are looking to make $15 an hour, and that is just not within your budget, it is much better for them to know that upfront. Um, again, being as clear and open as possible uh, as possible. Do you offer any sort of benefits? Put that in there as well. So the next thing we want to talk about is, again, kind of just touching on where can you post your job announcement. Um, think about the networks that you already have around you, your local resources. You've got a gold mine of connections right at your fingertips. You just may not have really ever thought of it that way. So start with your local connectors. These are people in your community that you may know. Um, post it on your own social media pages that you are looking for someone for your child care business. So think about, you know, who do you know that seems to know everyone? Who do you know that's lived there forever and knows everybody, you know, around? Um, those are the people that you want to reach out to and let them know that you are looking for someone, um, you know, to, to work in your child care business. So also think about and remember social media. Um, it is important. It's, you know, it's a great way to show, you know, showcase cute kid pictures and everybody loves those. But it's also, it can be, um, um, you know, a great way to reach different 
parent groups, um, local groups, whether that be Facebook or Nextdoor, um, all types of you know, different groups that could be in your local area. And the best part about all of those groups is that they're free. So you definitely want to make sure that you're utilizing those. Lastly, don't forget about, you know, your own online presence. Use your own website, your own Facebook page. If, you're, if your business has a LinkedIn profile, use that as well. Post about your job openings on your um, you know, your digital uh, online forums as well. So uh, make sure everybody knows if you are looking for, uh, for, you know, to add a great team member. Remember when it comes to finding top talent, sometimes the best strategy is to look close to home. So your community, your current families and your current staff. Um, and again, those local networks are all powerful uh, resources in your search for the perfect addition to your child care team. So crucial aspect of finding the right, um, right staff member for you is, again, where can you post your job announcement is focusing on the early childhood education networks that are near you, um, your local resources, your early childhood education programs, teachers associations, homeschool programs, homeschool groups. Um, a lot of times the, you know, some of the moms are looking for part-time positions and they could be the perfect fit for what you're looking for. Um, reach out directly to any child care professionals who you may have, and, you know, who could potentially help you. You know, even if it's your license, your licensor, um, you know, they are people who are in your building and they know how great your program is. So a lot of times they would be more than happy to, you know, pass along the word that you're looking for someone. And again, Pushing back to that Facebook groups, care.com, Indeed, those are all very important, especially when you have this job announcement crafted in a way that is a marketing tool for you. So some pro tips for connecting with top talent. Um, these strategies can really help to give you the edge in today's competitive job market. Um, again, you want to leverage other professionals in the child care field as those potential connectors. This strategy often is overlooked, um, but it is incredibly powerful. So think about the network of professionals that you've built over the years and definitely want to reach out to them when you are. Don't be afraid um, to reach out to them when you are looking for top talent. Send an email, make a phone call, um, or even you know meet up with someone for some coffee and explain that you, what you're looking for and ask if they know anyone who might be a good fit. You would be surprised how often this can potentially lead to great candidates. So remember in the childcare field, we are all working towards the same goal, which is to provide the best care possible and education for the children. So most professionals will be happy to help you if they can. So who knows, you know, you they might reach out to you in the future when they're looking to fill a position as well. So Definitely want to, you know, think about the awful and sometimes, you know, exhausting job market and how hard it is to really find someone in this job market um, and, and think about you know, it's not always about money. It's not always about compensation. However, you do want to make sure that you are somewhat in line with what others are offering in your area. Um, it is not, again, all about the money, but it definitely is something that is important. Um, you know, do you offer different professional development opportunities? Um, maybe you can provide a mentorship program for your new hires. These things are key um, and very important for uh, people who've been working in the childcare world and know how stressful it can be. So uh, attracting new talent is only half of the battle, really. Um, you know, when it comes to building the backbone of your childcare business, implementing retention initiatives is crucial and in the building and maintaining of those that highly skilled team that you need. So you want to consider your current employees um, 
with some very high value and very high, um, you know, thoughtfulness for them. Um, you also want to identify um, factors that could potentially target those retention strategies. This can include things like, you know, it's sometimes hard to think about flexible scheduling for childcare, but do you offer lesson planning time? If you do, could they do that lesson planning time at home? Um, or, you know, are you providing regular training sessions or team building activities? All of these things are very important. They need to feel like a part of a team. So remember your current employees can be your best ambassadors when it comes to attracting new talent. If they're happy and engaged, um, they're going to be more likely to be welcoming to new team members as well. Um, and also to spread the word if you are looking. So keep all of those things in mind because, you know, recruitment is very important, but retention is just as important. So as we near the end of our session, let's discuss again, some, some critical aspects of talent management that are particularly relevant in today's um, you know, kind of crazy job market. So you again, want to focus and balance attracting talent with that retention piece as well. Um, and you also want to adapt to the evolving landscape in the child care um, environment, in, in the child care employment environment. So first, let's talk about the delicate balance between attracting new talent and retaining those um, current stars that you have. It's not enough to focus solely on recruitment. Um, obviously, once you get them in the door, you need to be able to keep them. So recruiting is really just the starting point. So when it comes to attraction, competitive compensation packages are very important. Um, but again, it is not the only thing that makes a person want to work for you or stay working for you. Um, sorry, um, consider offering sign-on bonuses if you can for those really hard to fill positions or referral bonuses for current um, employees who bring in new talent or even referral bonuses for current families who um, you know help you to find a new uh, new talent there are you know some great retention strategies that you really need to keep in mind. Um, once you've attracted great people, how do you keep them? Professional development opportunities, um, they're crucial. Your best employees really do want to grow and improve by offering ongoing training, mentorship programs that we mentioned earlier, or even tuition assistance for relevant coursework. You're not just helping them, you're strengthening strengthening your entire program by them growing educationally. Um, and creating a positive work culture is another key to both attraction um, and also retention. So this includes fostering open communication, promoting that work-life balance, stress, childcare is stressful. Um, make sure your people are taking some time off. Um, and then creating a supportive team environment. Remember that word gets around in our field, right? And especially if you're in, um, you know, whatever town that you're in, most people know, oh, you don't want to work down there at that place. Um, so definitely keep that in mind. Childcare businesses known for their positive culture often find it easier to attract those top candidates because again, word gets around. Recognition and appreciation programs can also go a long way. This doesn't always have to be about money either. Um, there are many different ways to recognize your, your current staff. Sometimes public acknowledgement, um, you know, uh, having something there in your building, um, you know, talking about how wonderful, you know, some of your staff members are. Um, those things can go a long way. And you also want to, again, remember the ever-changing job market. The child care field is constantly changing, and we need to change with it, not just, again, going back to that, you know, at the very beginning, posting that job and 
crossing our fingers and helping, hoping for the best. We need to, um, you know, evolve just as the childcare world is evolving as well. So keeping up with changes in the early childhood education practices is very important, but it's also important to keep up with the employment trends as well. So again, what are job seekers looking for in in this field? What are other child care businesses in your area offering? This knowledge is going to help you to remain competitive. Flexible work arrangements, again, can seem a little like, how would we do that? We take care of children. But um, remember, you know, potentially maybe you could offer a um, a schedule of four tens where they work four 10 hour days and then have one day off a week. Um, a lot of people really do like that schedule to give them a little bit more flexibility. Emphasize and keep emphasizing the work-life balance. It is key. Um, it really is a, um, you know, a very important for staff to not um, you know, there to prevent them from having burnout. It's very important to have that work-life balance for your staff. Um, and then lastly, don't forget about technology. You want to utilize technology in your recruitment efforts and also in your day-to-day -day operations as well. It's a, you know, it's important for the families to have that technology piece um, for communication and um, things like that with the staff, but it's also important for your staff. It helps them to be able to, you know, have their lesson plans um, in a, you know, some sort of child care management system um, and utilize things that way as well. So by balancing these attraction and retention strategies in staying adaptable um, to the market changes, you will be well positioned to build and maintain a strong team, even as the market continues to evolve. So as we wrap up our session today, um, we definitely want to Again, you know, remember everything that we talked about, um, whether that be uh, the importance of defining your ideal candidate, um, you know, utilizing all of the things that you can possibly think, where are they, what are they looking for, who, who are they, what is their education, Again, you know, thinking about defining that in, in your own head before you cast out, um, you know, and put out that job announcement. We learned about leveraging diverse recruitment channels um, and how crucial that is in today's market. Don't rely just on one method. Combine, you know, that traditional job posting with those other creative ideas that we came up with. Um, remember that your next star employee might come from an unexpected um, source. Throughout the recruitment process, make sure that you highlight your childcare business's uniqueness, your unique values, um, what is special about you, whether it's your teaching philosophy, your community involvement, um, how many years of you know, experience all of your staff members have. Um, you definitely want to put out there and let people know why it is amazing to work for you. Um, we've also discussed the power of nurturing your professional development network, um, your connectors and your connections. Utilize them, um, reach out to those people. Keep fostering relationships um, within your local community. These are a vital resource for you. Um, lastly, stay adaptable. The job market, especially in childcare, is constantly, again, constantly changing and evolving. So be prepared to adjust your strategies as needed. Um, what works today might not work tomorrow. So I would like to thank you all for joining me and for um, you know being here for this very, very important topic. Um, remember, connecting with top talent is an ongoing process. It requires creativity, persistence, and a genuine commitment to excellence in early childhood education. So um, as we are finishing here, we're going to go back into the main um, main room for our Q&A session. So all you're going to do is click the button to leave this breakout room, and then we'll meet back in the main room um, with our Spanish-speaking participants for our Q&A. If you have any questions, you are more than welcome to um, put them in the chat now 
or come off mute and ask um, either myself or Vanessa. Nothing in the chat. Okay. No questions. Has anybody ever utilized a job announcement before rather than just a regular old job description like we're used to? Or is this brand new thought process for you all? ¿Alguien ha usado una descripción del puesto? This is new to Debbie. Yes. It was new to me as well, Debbie. I wish I would have known it when I was a director. <laughs> Hello. Do you have a question or a comment? I can see you. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yo tengo una pregunta, ¿cómo podemos uh, pedir o sugerir que, que permitan a los jóvenes estudiantes que puedan ayudarnos en los programas? Yo tengo clase okay. intensiva, entonces es uh, los niños, cuando me mandan los jóvenes a, en vacaciones, so, ellos conectan muy bien con los niños y hacen bien su, su trabajo, eso me gustaría que tuviéramos esa posibilidad también. Okay, Erica, so Merlene had asked um, in our group, she has noted, she has an inclusive program. Um, some of her, um, of her students have autism, are in the spectrum. And she has noticed that in the summer, some high school students come and they, uh, they work our, at her um, childcare center. But um, the state does not does not allow that. They have to be at least eighteen. Mm -hmm. Do you know if there's any way that they could um, request that, or or any suggestions? Does anybody maybe have a yeah. similar situation? I mean, I I am not familiar. Um... I didn't say this at the beginning, but I'm actually in the state of Virginia. Um, it's the same um, same rules, licensing rules here in Virginia. They have to be 18 to be alone. Um, so that does make it very, very difficult. Um, I would suggest just, you know, try to utilizing, try to utilize them as much as possible, um, you know, with somebody else to count as that second person. Um, but yeah, that is really hard. I don't personally know anything specific to New Mexico on that. I don't know if anybody here, um, you know, that's, that's just attending knows any more than I do, but sorry, that's not very helpful. Thank you. Uh -huh. Merlin, lo que, lo que dice Erica es que eh, bueno, Erica está en Virginia, pero las, las leyes de licencia son muy similares. De, eh, sí, tienen que tener mayor, tienen que ser mayores de 18 años para poder estar eh, con los niños, lo que lo hace bastante difícil. Lo que ella sugiere es tratar de, de utilizar esta ayuda lo más posible, pero teniendo a una persona mayor de 18 años con ello, con ellos para que sea eh, para que sea esta persona la que cuente pero no tenemos información específica de, de New Mexico lamentablemente gracias porque sí he batallado miré también eso de los contactos eso es lo que estoy utilizando ahorita para poder reclutar personal <risa> Uh -huh. No personal, lo que les, les comenté ahorita de mi empleada, ella tenía a su niña aquí. Uh 
o sea, era de nuevo ingreso y ella iba a ser nueva trabajadora. Pero Sí. como es un, es un programa en casa, es un poquito difícil porque quería ella dedicarse a cuidar a la niña. Entonces no, Pasó. no sabía esa línea de, de trabajo y cuidar a su hija. Entonces en eso no, no necesito yo creo que aprender más a... a A utilizar esos contactos. Sí. Poder a, 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 a contratar a la persona adecuada. Yes, she's just saying that right now she um, she's starting to use her contacts to find um, uh, the right employees. She was sharing that she hired uh, this person who she thought was a good candidate. Um, her child was um, attending the daycare program. It's a home daycare. And um, but she could, uh, the employee ended up leaving. She could not. Um, differentiate the the oh gosh sorry I'm running out of words here <laughs> um, uh, her her she could not differentiate her role as a teacher and her role as a mother Yeah. Okay. Sorry. I thought that's what you were trying to say. <laughs> um, yes <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, that's very hard. Um, very hard. And for those of you who don't have any, any further questions, um, we are finished other than the, just the questions. I know some people have, have, um, have jumped off, but thank you all for, for attending. But, um, but yes, definitely that's hard. I would suggest, you know, I don't know if there's, you know, like, as was mentioned, you know, any sort of um, community college or any of any colleges in the area that would potentially have older um, students rather than, you know, the high school. That's another thought, I guess. Sí, lo que Erika sugiere es que eh, tal vez contactar a, a universidades o eh, ya sea públicas eh, o privadas en tu localidad, porque tal vez eh, pues estos estudiantes son un poquito mayores y puedes tal vez conseguir eh, empleos ahí, em, empleados, perdón. ¿Alguna otra pregunta de alguien más? Gracias. If anybody else has any other questions, um, you know, please let us know. I'm just trying to go through these last couple slides here to make sure we show them. Um, but yes, there's a lot more information, um, both from Um, Crisair, as well as from Civitas Strategies on the Crisair website. Um, if you do have additional questions that were not um, addressed this evening, um, you can also go to the Tom Copeland blog. Um, Civitas Strategies runs the Tom Copeland blog, uh, but there is tons of information um, on that website as well, and it is at tomcopelandblog.com. Sí, eh, eh, tenemos, hay muchísima información en la página eh, de Crecer Nuevo México. Is it crecernm.org? Is that what yes. it was? Uh, uh -huh. uh, toda la información está disponible tanto en inglés como en español. Hay muchísimos recursos. Y, do you mind moving to the next slide, Erica? Thank you. Y también tenemos, eh, si pueden seguir este código QR, para el blog de Tom Copeland. Si tal vez ahorita no se les ocurre alguna pregunta, pero luego hoy en la noche que con el insomnio se recuerdan de que de algo que querían preguntar, ahí pueden enviarnos la pregunta. Hay muchísima información también. Es posible que encuentren la respuesta a la pregunta que ustedes tengan. Pero si no, hay una sección donde pueden escribirnos y enviarnos eh, su pregunta y nosotros con muchísimo gusto les responderemos vía correo electrónico. And then one other slide. Um, we also have a YouTube channel um, with tons of wonderful information in both English and Spanish. So um, if you are interested, you can scan that QR code um, for our YouTube channel. Uh, we post things all the time on our YouTube channel. Y no se olviden también de visitar nuestro canal de YouTube 
donde van a encontrar muchísimos videos eh, valiosos de información, tanto en inglés como en español. Eh, hay muchos videos que, hay, hay, perdón, hay muchísima información que se actualiza constantemente. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there are no further questions, we thank you all for joining us this evening and we thank Chris Air for um, also having us and we hope you have a wonderful evening. Muchas gracias a todos y feliz noche.